Holy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is your day. Amen. We want to thank God for this morning. We want to thank God for the privilege given to us to come at His feet today. And thank God you also joining us this morning. I believe it is well with you. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to thank you for today's morning prayer. We well, thank you for this sound sleep granted us the privilege coming together at your feet at this time. And we pray, Father, open our eyes and give us understanding and grace to be doers of your world in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to us, Lord. Amen. I know you have answered our prayers. Amen. Holy Ghost, take charge this morning. Amen. Bless us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to greet you. Good morning. You are welcome to our morning prayer. These few minutes we are going to spend as looking into the word of God. And there we pray. I pray that the Holy Spirit will take charge, will take control of everything we are going to do in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. For some time now, if you don't forget, we have been talking about destiny, destiny, about our destiny. And we are learning so much from the past. Whether saints, whether king and others, we are learning so much from their life. And I am very sure also that we also will be a blessing not a curse to the oncoming generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This morning, we are going to focus more on our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to see Jesus, our model of destiny. We want to see his life. Before he was born, after birth, his ministry, and we also want to talk about part of his suffering, his death, resurrection, and we want to learn so much from his life. So we are going to focus on him, and I pray his life will be a blessing to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If we take the book, let's take the book of Second Peter. Because of what we want to consider this morning, some people, they may have one thing or the other. But let's see what the scripture told us. That we are telling you the whole truth. When the writer, Dr. Luke, when he was talking... I will take Acts chapter 1 first. Acts chapter 1, I take verse 1. The former three things have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, that he through the Holy Ghost had commanded unto his given commandment unto his apostle, whom he has chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And you see here, the apostle, this writer, Dr. Luke, was telling us infallible proofs how Jesus died how he rose again his disciples saw him for 40 days and let's hear from one of the chief apostles that is Peter himself now let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1 let's take from verse 16 for we have not followed cunningly devised fables 
we when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eye witnesses of his majesty. You see here, then he went further. Let's read it down. Let's read it down to verse 21. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light. That shineth in a dark place until the day done, and the day star arise in your heart. Listen to verse 20. Knowing this force that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but only men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see here, this is Peter himself talking now. The writer of Luke and um, St. Luke and Act of the Apostle told us infallible proofs, told us about his weaknesses. They saw him after his resurrection, before he was taken away from their sight in the cloud and said he's coming back again and we want to see his life. We want to see his ministry. We want to see how he brought salvation to a man. And before we do that again, let's see another apostle in the mouth of one or two witnesses. Shall every word be established? We want to see St. John, St. John, St. John. Chapter 21, I take verse 24. This is the disciples which testify of these things and wrote this thing, and we know that his testimony is true. No matter what people are saying, no matter what the Jews are saying, the religious people are saying, no matter what our uh, uh, modern people today are also talking about Jesus, but we are telling you the fact. Now, look at chapter 20. Chapter 20 of the same book of St. John, in verse 30 and 31. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. All these are written so that we may believe. We want to see his life. We have been talking about destiny, but he is a model to us. We want to see how he, he was, before he was born. We want to see everything. What the scripture told us and how they came to pass. I pray for you. All that is written concerning your life, nothing will utter it, it will come to pass. Amen. Nothing will divert your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord live an exemplary life for us. He is a model, a good example. And oh, now let's go. I will take more of St. Matthew today. Because Matthew spoke more about him trying to prove to the Jews from the scripture's perspective that truly this is Christ. The Son of the Living God is the Savior of the world. And we want to see all this. We want to see how the fulfillment, how he lived his life. Oh, his life is a blessing to us and a great challenge. Let's open our Bible to the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew. St. Matthew. Are you there? We want to talk about before his birth, what the scripture says. In Matthew 1, I will start the reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
for he shall save his people from their sin. Verse 22, for all now, all this was done, listen, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That is it. Before he was born, Isaiah has spoken about it. There is no time you can go. You can read on your own. If you can read Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, chapter 8, verse 8 and 10. You see it there. Prophecy has gone before that this is how he will be born by a virgin. His life was peculiar and special. And it came to pass. I pray for you once again. What is written concerning you, the enemy will not divert you. Amen. They will definitely come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, that is before his birth. Now, what happened? You see, his birth also, everything concerning his life has been written. And everything came to pass. Exactly. Let's see chapter 2. After his birth, let's see chapter 2. Uh, we are going to consider verse 15, verse 17. The time is not there. We would have gone through many, many other passages. And was there until the death of Herod. Before this death of Herod, when he was there, when Herod was planning to kill him, to, you know, when he was very young, because he didn't want any rival, like many people today, they don't want rival. When he heard that the king had been born, he said, we are a king, we are me here, another king, never. And he did everything to get rid of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ when he was still a child. And then, uh, thank God, <laughs> the enemy failed. Your enemy will fail. Amen. He didn't give me better amen. amen. Now, let's take verse, I'll take verse, uh, before I come to uh, that um, verse, chapter 2, um, Okay, let's take verse 15. And there, and was there until the death of Herod, you will see the end of your enemy. Amen. Your enemy will not pursue you in vain in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that our enemy will repent. They will not die in their sin. Amen. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Do you see that one there? After error tried and failed, as your enemy will try and bet they will fail. Hmm. You didn't give me a minute quickly Amen. in that place. I say your enemies will try, but they will fail Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's see verse 17. Then was fulfilled which was spoken by Jeremiah, the, the prophet saying in Ramah, there was voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. You see, he escaped. You also, you escape. Mm -hmm. Just like what um, Job told us, he disappointed the devices of the wicked. God will disappoint all the devices, all the setup of the wicked against your life and family in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, that was when he was young. Many of us too, the Lord spared our life when we were young, when we don't know anything. But God, who kept the Lord alive, will also keep us alive to fulfill our destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, even here, you know, in verse 23, we are going to see another thing again. And it came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. Do you see that? Even where he lived, God has programmed for our life. Why are we troubling ourselves? Many people, maybe God want them to live in a particular place because of economic recession. They will just try to move and change the will of God instead of praying and knowing the perfect will of God. We are not going to do that. 
the will of God will be done in our life in Jesus' name. Mm. In chapter 3, verse 15, we see him here being an example. An example in everything for us. You see his humility. Before you go into the ministry, chapter 3, verse uh, 15, he came to be baptized according to the word of God. In verse 15, and Jesus answering in verse 14, but John forbidding, forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Come thou unto me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer so it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Do you see humility here? Do you see, you see, you see John also. You see his humility. You see, how I pray that in our ministries, our calling, is before he started his ministry, it was an example to follow. You see, how I pray that all of us, as ministers of God, God will fill our heart with humility. Yes. We children told, just like what Apostle Peter told us in chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5. You can read that on your own. That all of us should be humble, both young and old. All of us should be humble. With any title we have, there should be humility in our life. And I pray by the grace of God, we are going to display humility in every area of our life in Jesus' name. Before his birth, after his birth, where he lived, his ministry, before he started his ministry, we see everything. How he followed everything according to what was written concerning his life. How I pray we too, we will do everything according to his written concerning our life in Jesus' name. Let's quickly now see his ministry. We cannot cover everything. Just like what I said, we will just take some part. We think we want to majorly, we want to take everything majorly from Saint Matthew, but at times we'll just go to other, just to confirm it and to add one information or the other. In chapter 4 of Matthew, I take verse 14. Are you there? Join me there. Are you there now? Verse 14. God bless you. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zeus, the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee, Galilee, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people we sat in darkness saw great light, and to them we sat in the region of the sh and the shadow of death. Light is sprung up. Do you see that? And the Bible told us in verse seventeen, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." This was the ministry he started when he started. Where he started that ministry has been prophesied earlier, has been written concerning him. And when he came, he did just exactly that. I, I continue, I'll be, I'll be repeating it, that by the grace of God, we will know, we will understand, and we will live according to what is written concerning our life. You will not do anything that contradicts the will of God for your life in Jesus' name. There will be no diversion. Here, this, you know, there's another place again. This is where Capernaum, this is where he has come to start his ministry, to start preaching the gospel. We see him here. His message was straight. Repent. You want to make heaven? Repent. You can't continue in sin and just be religious and say you want to make heaven. It's not possible. The first step to make heaven is to repent, to turn away from all our wicked ways, to turn away. And the same thing I'm telling you this morning, if you have not repented, that is the first thing you should do. You want to make heaven? You want heaven's gate to be open unto you? Going to church is not enough. That is good, but it's not enough. No, being kind, doing good to the poor is not enough. Number one thing is that you must repent. See yourself as a sinner. See yourself that you cannot save yourself, that you need a Savior. And that is the Savior speaking to you this morning. I pray we will obey Him. Now, if you also read chapter 5. Are you there? Chapter 5. Let me take verse 17. But uh, before I take that verse 17... Okay, let's see verse 17. Think not that 
I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You see that? They, they thought maybe when they, when they started talking, when they started teaching them, maybe they would say, aha, thank God, this one uh, has come to change everything. They said, no, I've come to fulfill that. I've come to make you to understand better. You don't understand before, but now I have come. I'm the one who gave it to Moses. I've made you now to understand. This is what you know. This is what, oh, how I pray that we will follow the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you read it from that chapter 5, from verse 1, you see the people came. He started teaching them, teaching them, started explaining everything, giving them understanding of the word of God. And that is the calling of our pastors too, our leaders. That is our calling that we should put the people, we should make them to understand the word of God more. They should understand the scriptures more. We should interpret it according to the scripture, not turning it. Not saying, you see, you cannot reverse, revise. Or you want to sit down and say, this is what I've been written before. You want to change it. You cannot change it. The standard remains the same. That was what he was trying to tell them. I have not come to change the standard. I have come to even make the standard higher and better. To give you more understanding this time than ever before. So the same thing also, pastors. That is our calling. That we should make the scriptures. We should give them more. We, see, we should impart what we call knowledge. The fear of God. The love of God. Into the heart of the people. Not to turn them from righteousness to unrighteousness. No. That is damnable. That is a great thing. To destroy what the scripture. The Bible says don't turn to, from it to the left or to the right. Just remain there. The standard remains from Genesis to Revelation. The standard remains. Revelation told us, don't add to it. If you add to it, God is going to add to your plague. He said, don't subtract from it. The same, you see, leave it just as it is. If you do not understand, leave it there. Those who understand will teach you. Go to where they can teach you the word of God. And thank God today is Monday Bible study. Can I hear amen at your end? Mm -hmm. At the grace of God, we meet, you see, in our different location. If you are a member of the palace, even if you are not a member of the palace, you can join us today. Seven, six o'clock in all our locations. And our Father in the Lord will come up by 7 p.m. You can connect wherever you are. Maybe in a place of work, maybe abroad, anywhere. Just this year, lame. Monday Bible study, live. You will be hooked up. And God is going to bless you. Can I hear amen? amen. Now, let's go a little now. We want to go to uh, the book of St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 4. You see, you see, the Lord Jesus Christ knew what was written concerning his life. And that is what we also must know. You must, you must know what is written concerning your life. Why are you here? Find out why you are here. What is written concerning your life? Now, in Luke chapter 4, as I said, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. Are you there now? Now, a passage was written, a passage was read. If you start reading from verse 17, a passage was read from the book of Isaiah. And after going through it, let me just read chapter 18 and then I'll come down a little bit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book and began and it gave it again to the minister and sat down the eye of all them that were in the in the in the synagogue were fasting on him in verse 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears praise the lord Hallelujah. he knew what was written concerning his life when he saw it he read it exactly this why i'm here i pray you will know what is written concerning you Amen. and you will claim it Amen. What is written concerning your health, your prosperity, your breakthrough, your blessings, your ministry? You must know. You must understand. And you must claim them 
And by the grace of God today, things are going to turn around for the better for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We'll still come back again if you read Saint, uh, that St. Luke chapter 21 verse 24, chapter 24 verse 44. He saw them. He explained everything to them. He opened their eyes so that they would understand his calling. He knows it. He knows what everything concerning him right from Genesis to the uh, all the synoptic, uh, sorry, all the um, uh, Old Testament, Genesis, Pentateuch, they know the first uh, uh, five books there. He knew all that were written concerning him. And in the Psalm, in the prophet, he told them everything. I pray you will know what is written concerning your life. Mm. And you will claim them and they will be yours in Jesus' name. Mm. Now, we want to see, go back again to the book of Matthew. Our time has gone. We want to quickly round up now chapter 8. Chapter 8 of Matthew verse 17 8 17 look at it again that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmity and bear our sicknesses that was written he came here not only to die to save us from our sin he came the suffering he passed through on the cross also was to provide healing for us and I pray you will claim that healing. Amen. Healing will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 13, chapter 13. We are going to be faster a little bit this time. Chapter 13, I take verse 35. 13, 35. Are you there? Please open your Bible quickly and let's uh, go through it. You will see it that everything written there, you know, he fulfilled all that we are written concerning his life. Verse uh, 13, 35. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parable, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Do you see that? That was his teaching again. Even the, when he was, you know, using parable, illustrations, stories to drive in his teaching, to give them understanding. People start asking, why are you doing this? He said, it has been written. This is what the scripture said. Oh, we we'll base our life on what the scripture has said in Jesus' name. Now quickly, chapter 21, verse 4. Chapter 21, Matthew 21, verse 24. Are you there? 21, 24. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask the 21 verse 4 rather verse 4 verse 4 verse 4 all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell you the daughters of zion behold the king comment unto thee milk and sitting upon an axe and a cloth and fowl of an axe the disciples went and did as he commanded them. You see, everything is life. This triumphant entry into Jerusalem, everything has been written down. And he followed everything. Chapter 26. Now, this was when he was running up his ministry. And let's see his trial. You see how he suffered. He passed through sorrow. He passed through suffering. He passed through. He, he sacrificed his life for us. How I pray that by the grace of God, when the time at times we may pass through some challenges of life, if it is the will of God, His grace will be there. His grace will carry you through in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear Amen? Amen. Give me better Amen. amen. This time, let's go to chapter 26. I, ta- I take verse 54. But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled? That thus it must be. You see, when he was arrested, when when there was reaction, he said, the scripture must be fulfilled. Leave that one. You see, he knew everything. He knew everything, as I said. How I pray, we will know everything. Mm-hmm. Concerning our life, anyone that you discover that this one is not the will of God concerning your life, you will change it. You will react. Don't accept anything that is not written concerning your life. Don't accept anything that is not written concerning your family, concerning your children, concerning your wife, concerning your husband, concerning your family members. 
Make sure you don't allow the devil to divert any part of your life. Make sure you live a fulfilled life. You see our Lord, before his birth, after his birth, before his full ministry, when he went into the ministry, he knew everything during the time when he was running up his ministry. You see, everything, he was following his step after the order. How I pray, our life also will be orderly. Amen. Now, chapter 26, I take uh, chapter 26, verse um, 56 now. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophet might be fulfilled. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. Before this time, he told them what is going to happen. He told them what he was going to pass through in Jerusalem. I was going to be mocked. I was going to be beaten. I was going to be crucified. And the third day, he will, he will rise up again. And then, you know, all these things where they are going to meet him, everything he had told them. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, the word of God can never fail. That's one thing you should know. The scriptures, you see, is different from other books. Everything you seek, every prophecy will definitely come to pass. We definitely come to pass. Everything that is going on in our world now, this is the time we call the period of the Gentiles. And they will definitely come. They will definitely come to pass. And let's see chapter 27. At this time, we see how, you know, Judas Cariot, even the Bible have told us what Judas Cariot will do. And exactly it came to pass. Oh, I pray evil prophecy will not come to pass in your life. Amen. The Bible knew, and the Bible said it. Not everybody will accept Jesus. Some will reject Jesus. Some will not accept him. Some will criticize him. Some will talk. Yes, I pray you will not be among those people who will reject the Savior. Amen. He that believeth shall be saved. But anyone that believeth not shall be damned. That is what the scriptures say. You are, you are not going to be among those that will be damned in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. When all these disciples fled away, let's see what happened. And when Judas sold him, what happened to Judas? Judas even died before him. Hmm. I pray you will not be a betrayer. You will not betray your family. You will not betray your wife. You will not betray your husband. You will not betray your, your parents. In the place of work, you will not be a betrayer as well. In the community, in the nation, you will not be a betrayer. You are going to be a righteous person in the name of Jesus. In verse 9, then, 27, 9 now, there was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. That is it. You see him here? Do you see the Lord Jesus Christ here? He was sold hmm, for 30, 30 pieces of silver. Judas sold his master. Ah! I pray you will not betray your family. Amen. In ministry, you will not betray your pastor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know what happened to him? The Bible told us, and he gave them for the porter's feet, as the Lord appointed me. And all these things have been written, as I said earlier. We'll still come back again before we round up now. We want to see how... He eventually finished everything on the cross. He died there. He has suffered. In this passage we are talking about, he has suffered. Judas Christ has betrayed him. He was beaten. He was slapped. He, you can talk about any humiliation. He passed through it because of the salvation of man. And concerning what has been written, he himself spoke about it before all this thing happened. Before he died on the cross, before everything, he has said it earlier. And they all came to pass. Now, we will listen to the word of God. Everything you also you are passing through on earth today has been written already. You are the one who will find them out and make sure you live according to the word of God. In verse 35, verse 35 of Matthew 27, verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garment, casting Lord, 
that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garment among them, and upon my very short did they cast lot. You see, you see what happened right on the cross again. What happened to him was according to what was written. So I want to tell you at times, see, if you must find out why you are here, you're calling and all the rest, so that if some things are happening, you will not be moved. And God will give you the grace. You will not be moved because you know what has been written concerning you. If you look into the life of Paul, exactly all what he was passing through, he knew his calling and he pursued that calling. And at the end of the day, he declared. Let's see how what he declared. And we want to see also Jesus Christ. Now you see him here right on the cross after suffering. They nailed him. Oh, what a terrible. That was the greatest crime in those days. Innocence. The innocent Lord, the innocent Savior, suffering on our behalf. How I pray. What are you passing through today? Don't backslide. Don't go back. Just keep on. It's a matter of time. It didn't remain on the cross forever. It was just there for some hours. Your problem is just for some hour. Your problem will soon pass away. Mm -hmm. You will not die in this problem. Mm -hmm. The Lord will see you through. It's true you are mm -hmm. suffering today. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just pray for grace and God will see you through. The one that is not the will of God will reject it on your behalf in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The one that is the will of God, God will give you the grace to finish well in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let's see Second Timothy chapter 4 from verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Thank God we love is appearing. He's coming back. And uh, he died on the cross in John chapter 19, from verse 29 to 30. You see him there. He was nailed there on the cross till he gave up the ghost in verse 30. He said, it is finished. Hallelujah. Amen. You didn't give me amen there. I say hallelujah. Amen. He finished everything. Paul finished his ministry. We also, we are going to finish well. Amen. Can you give me amen there? Amen. I said, we we finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The time is not there. Our time has gone. But I will still want us to read a passage. You see, uh, uh, this passage in St. Luke chapter 24. In St. Luke chapter 24, this story is a wonderful story. Let me just take you there. You will love it. Uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, I will just take <clears throat> from verse, um, in verse 15, after his death, they didn't know that he has resurrected. He was, oh, he, he was with some disciples who were going to their village. And let's listen to the story very well. Very beautiful. You will really enjoy it. We will learn a lot of lessons from this story. Are you there now? In, March, in Luke chapter 24 from verse 15, and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near. This time he has resurrected. You will not die in this problem. Mm -hmm. You will come out of this challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of time. You will definitely come out. Just mm -hmm. share up. Your problem has limited time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You didn't give me this amen very well. Mm -hmm. You will come out triumphantly. Mm -hmm. Can I hear amen? Mm -hmm. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications? Are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and as sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Had thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Had thou not known these things which are come to pass? There, there in these days, in verse 19, and he said, What thing? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and the world, and the world before, and the world before God, and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. 
But we trusted that it had been he should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were early, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And a certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulchre and found it also, and found it even so as the women had said, but the but him they saw not. In verse 25 now, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of fear to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory and beginning at Moses, that is Genesis and all the first five books there, and all the prophets, you know, prophets from Samuel then, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Hallelujah. You know, I kept on telling you, he knew what was written concerning himself, and you will know your own as well. Mm -hmm. Let's go back, let's continue the reading. And they drew near unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone for that. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass, as he sat at the meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and break it, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Let's stop there. You see, they were talking, and Jesus was there. Let me tell you one thing. Don't forget this. In all your conversation, Jesus is there. Don't forget it. The conversation between you and your wife, the conversation between you and your family, the conversation between you and your colleagues, your conversation, if you are the one who is committing secret sin, Jesus is listening to every conversation on phone, every conversation, anywhere, everywhere, in the day, in the night. Jesus is listening to every conversation. If you are telling lies, if you are just an hypocrite, Jesus is listening to every conversation. And it was with as if he's just a stranger. But at the end of the day, he opened their eyes. I pray God we open our eyes. Amen. He opened their eyes. You see, he told them what the scripture. You see, always follow what the scripture has said. Base your life on the scriptures. Follow every good example of the scriptures. And by the grace of God, it shall be well with you. To call the whole story short, let's see verse 45. You can read the other. He made himself known to his disciples. He opened their eyes. Let's see verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. This is very, very important. This is a very good prayer that we should pray. And then, thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead at all day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You see now, he opened their eyes, and they you know they now understood the scriptures. I pray we will understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to thank God this morning. I believe you have learned one thing or the other. Let us pray. Let's go to the Lord, a model of destiny. In everything from his, before his birth, Till is dead. He understood everything and he lived just like that according to the scripture. You are going to thank God. Let's thank God first for the good example of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God will give us grace to be the doers of what we are hearing. We will not just hear, we will learn from the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also will live a meaningful lifestyle. We will live a meaningful life, a meaningful life, a meaningful life. Let's open our mouth. Number one, thank God, appreciate God, worship Him, thank Him, just praise Him, just magnify Him. 
Today is your day. Thank the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for what He has taught you this morning. We have seen Jesus, our model of destiny. He lives according to all that we are reading concerning His life. Before His birth, after His birth, His ministry, everything. Everything is teaching everything we according to the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We too we are going to pray, Lord, help me to live according to what you wrote concerning my life. Open your mouth. Open my eye. Let me understand all the things you have written concerning my life. The earlier we discover it, the better. Lord, give me understanding of all you have written concerning my life. Give me grace to live according to all that I written concerning my life. Thank you, Father. Pray this prayer very well. Make sure after this morning prayer, find time, fast, pray, seek the face of God. If you have not known what are written concerning your life, write them down. Know them. Make sure you live according to your calling. According to your calling, your, your destiny. Write them down. Pray on them. And make sure you finish everything. Pray for grace to finish your life well. Not to die prematurely. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray this morning, Lord. Help me not to be diverted. Many destiny has been diverted. They are not living according to what was written concerning them. We have seen that Jeroboam, his life contradicts. If your life contradicts the word of God, you are outside the will of God. You are outside what is written concerning you. If you are not serving God, you are outside. You may have money, you may have popularity. It's deception. It is the game of the devil. The devil wanted to divert Jesus Christ. He said, look at all these things. I will give them to you. Diversion. Diversion. You become great. You become popular. Many people's destiny. Some people are supposed to be a pastor today. They are musicians. Some people are supposed to be a prophet of God today. They are dancers. Many people's destiny has been tampered with. The enemy has succeeded in robbing them as he did to Adam and Eve. You also, you are going to pray. The enemy will not divert you. Don't be deceived. Yeah, you are popular. You are everybody. About 40 million are your followers. 10 million are your followers. Hey, is that what you say? Is that what will take you to heaven? You are now this, you are now that. Don't you know that your destiny has been divide, you know, diverted and the enemy has deceived you? He has given you, say you want money, take money. You want a popularity, take popularity. As What is aim is just to get your destiny and change it. But this one will not happen to you. That is why you have to pray to the Lord. The enemy will not divert my destiny. No, I will live a fulfilled life. Pray this prayer very well. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Lord, the enemy will not divert my destiny. I will not be deceived by the fame of this world. I will not be deceived by money, popularity. I will not be deceived by anything. Oh Lord, let not the enemy divert my destiny. Let not the enemy destroy my destiny. Let not the enemy deceive me. Oh, and give me and change my destiny with money. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Lord, help me not to be diverted. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you because you are the God who answers prayer. As your children, all of us are calling upon you this morning that we should live a fulfilled life. Lord, help us to live a fulfilled life. Live according to what is written concerning our life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. One thing you see there, when Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples, he opened their eyes. In another place, he opened their understanding. These two words, very, very important. He opened their eyes. That is where we are going to start. Father, I open my eyes. I don't just want to be reading Bible. Some people say they are finished reading Bible this year now. But what, <laughs> what impact has, was your eye opened when you were reading it or you just read it for reading six? So that when people ask you, they say you read 10 chapters in a day. What are you gaining from those 10 chapters? What impartation are those 10 chapters having in your life? It's good to read the Bible. That is okay. But as the Lord opened your eyes, to make you to understand, to see the deep things inside the scriptures. Or is it, he opened their understanding. That means you may read and may not have understanding. You are going to pray, Lord, number one, open my eyes. Number two, give me deep understanding of the scriptures. That I want to live. Is it, supposing they don't have, their eyes were not open. They will just remain the same. How many people are going to church and their eyes are not open? How many people are even pastors who do not have understanding? You see, that's why we must pray this prayer. Lord, open my eyes. I want to understand the scriptures more. Give me understanding. Open my understanding to know the Savior. To have relationship with the Savior. To know my Creator. To have understanding. When you have understanding, when people are talking, you don't be smiling. You are in charge, you are in control. But when you don't have understanding, they could easily deceive you and you know don't turn the Bible upside down. Oh, you have to pray this prayer. Lord, open my eyes, open my understanding of the scripture so that I will know you, I will love you, I will serve you. Hope you are praying. Open your mouth, make sure you are praying for yourself. Pray. That is why we are here this morning. Father, we need to open our eyes. Lord, open our eyes. When it comes to the times of teaching the scriptures, the word of God, open our eyes. Give us understanding. We don't just want to read. We don't just want to hear. Many people are going to church today, but because they lack understanding, because their eyes are not open, they are still living in sin. Lord, don't let them die in sin. Open their eyes. Open their understanding that they will understand and pray through and come out and have victory. Some, they do not have understanding. That is why they allow the devil to do their life one kind. They allow the devil. They do not know how to shake the devil because they do not have understanding of the scriptures. They do not have understanding of the word of God. They do not, their eyes have not been opened to Bible passages to overcome their enemies. They do not have understanding how to overcome the devil. Lord, we need you. Open our eyes and give us understanding so that we will not mess up our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You will, dis you will discover something. My brethren, after their eyes have been opened, after they have real understanding of the scripture from Genesis that time to Malachi, you see their ministry change. The way they preach change. The everything changed. Especially when the power of the Holy Ghost eventually came upon them. Oh, they became so fiery and wonderful. Yeah, that is what you are going to pray. That Lord, <laughs> I want to be the person you want me to be. I want to live the type of life you want me to live. I want you to open your mouth now and start to tell the Lord. Yes, that Lord, as you open my eyes, as you give me understanding, now I, can, I want to operate at the level you want me to be. I don't just want to remain a kid. I don't just want to remain a babe. I want you to help me. Open your mouth. Make sure you are praying for yourself. You want to have real... You want When you are talking, when you are preaching... 
when you are discussing Bible, when people are talking, you because you have understanding, you will to help people more. You will to you know you will to open their eyes too. Yes, you'll be able to be a blessing to your church, your ministry. You'll be able to be a, you know, just be an ignorant fellow who didn't know what you are saying. You didn't understand your Christian faith. You do not know your your faith is based on your pastor. Your faith is based on your church. Your faith is based on your daddy or mommy. No, it should be based, it should be on the Lord. You are strong in the Lord. Very, very strong in the Lord. You are not just ordinary person. You are strong in the Lord. You are a blessing to people that will come in contact with you. The Lord was a blessing. Oh, he lived a fulfilled life. You will live a fulfilled life. You will finish well in the name of Jesus. You will finish well in the name of Jesus. No matter the problem you are passing through, you know what is written concerning your life. You are re you relax. You are in control of your life. You are in charge of your life. Know that your life is being manipulated by any power, that by any 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 force of the enemy. You are not confused. You are not under any distress because you know that God is in control. You know this is written concerning my life, and you stand there. The enemy, you shake the enemy. You say, devil, sit down there. Get out of my way because this is written concerning my life because you have understanding and because your eyes have been opened. Pray, God, give me understanding. Open my eyes so that I will live a fulfilled life. I believe you are praying for yourself this morning. Pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Today, you are going to your place of work or you are going to school or you are going out for a business, one thing or the other. Why don't you pray that the Lord will go before you today? God will keep you from every evil. Throughout this week, throughout the remaining part of this month, this year, your life, God will keep you from all evil. Open your mouth, commit your ways into the hand of God today, that God will lead you. Your plan this week, maybe this week you are planning for your wedding. Your wedding will come to pass. It will be successful. As you are planning this week, you are traveling out of the country for your business. God will grant you good success. Pray. You are writing an exam or you are going for an interview. Why don't you commit everything into the hand of God? You are a farmer. Pray. Commit all your ways into the hand of God. This morning, your family, your children, commit everything into the hand of God. Make sure you are praying for yourself. Yeah, that God will lead you. God will guide you. God will stand by you. God will grant you good success. Yes, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will keep you. God will give you victory over trials and temptations of life. Are you there? You are sick. God will touch you. God will heal you. God will deliver you. You will not die in sickness. Every power that wants to waste your life, let heaven waste them away. In the name of Jesus, that God, His protection will be over you. Thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand in your right hand, but no evil will come near you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can I hear better? Amen. 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 Let us pray together now. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for our role model, our Lord Jesus our mentor, our savior, our deliverer, our God. We see his example when he came to this world. Oh, Lord God of hosts. Everything written concerning him, everything came to pass. Oh, Father, how I pray that we will follow the step of our Lord Jesus. We will follow this good step. We will live a fulfilled life in Jesus' name. Amen. No power will divert our destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, many people's destiny have been changed. They have been deceived by money, by fame, popularity, position in this world. It is the devil. He brought that temptation to our Lord. He overcame. Lord, when these temptations also comes, help us to overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for your children this morning. We are going out. We are traveling. What anything we are doing this day, guide us, Amen. lead us. Amen. Don't forget, Lord, give us open our eyes to know why we are here. Give us understanding so that we will understand your word. We will live according to your word. So that at the end of life, we are not going to regret 
our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You only mercy for all your children traveling today. Amen. Our children writing exam, going for interview, let them find favor, grant them good success. Amen. Those who are sick, Lord, remember them, whether in the hospital or at home, touch them, Amen. heal them. Amen. Heal that spirit of infirmity. I command you, get out of their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are traveling out or traveling far away, leaving their family behind, you grant them journey mercy, you will keep their family as well in Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy will not take any advantage of any one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you today. Amen. The Lord guide you. The Lord provide for your needs. The Lord keep you from all evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for having answered our prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you joining us this morning. Don't forget in the evening, I told you, 6 o'clock, you can join any of our branch church, the Deeper Life Bible Church, closest to you, and 7 o'clock, our Father and the Lord will come up if you have anywhere you may be, if you have your hydroid phone there, you have uh, yeah, any facilities for social media, you can just join Deeper Life Bible Church, Monday Bible Study Live. And I'm telling you, you are not going to be the same. Your eye will be open and God will give you understanding of the scriptures. And I pray for you, you will live a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us for the morning prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye.